Good Sunday morning. We're back. It's Inside Tennessee, and our guest this morning is Herbert Slatery, who's just wrapped up eight years as the state's attorney general. Don Bosch, uh, you want to pick up the thread in regards to opioids or take us in a different direction? Uh, I think I think I'm going to follow Eddie's thread about uh, partisanship in the AG. Uh, uh, while I'm not sure what the best answer is, I don't disagree that our unique system in selecting AG might provide uh, the fairest representation. But Herb, I think it's pretty clear that uh, even under this system, uh, that there seems to be uh, a more partisan lean to the role of state AG. I, I heard you just say that when you're talking about President Obama and DACA, President Obama, of course, being a Democrat, this right now being largely a red state on the whole, um, he said the will of the people needs to be considered. Um, that's convenient, it seems, when it's a, a partisan issue that uh, the Republicans don't like. But then when we look at, again, I don't mean to beat the horse further, but when we look at the Tennessee trigger ban, the people didn't weigh in on that. The legislature weighed in on that and created the trigger ban, um, irrespective of what Dobbs gave them some rights to do so. But how do you balance the partisanship? And do you feel like that the office, just by the nature of our state legislature being very heavily Republican, has pushed your office and your role into a more partisan advocacy role than more neutral? Well, the first point I'd make, Don, is that, you know, we're, we're not a, a democracy in the strictest sense. We are a republic. And so we, the people act through their representatives. Uh, they did that through the trigger law. And, and the way that you change that is you, you get different people elected. Um, now, I don't, our office, we, I, don't, I never felt like the legislature was pushing us to do anything in particular. Uh, they were, they're uh, obviously interested, um, and so I. But you you have to decide on constitutional issues that, and it you it would depend on on how you view constitutional law. But on constitutional issues, those are issues that are really really important, and we ought to be weighing in on it. And and that's what I think that's part of what an AG does is. They want to be sure that you know that what's being done is you know comports with the Constitution, both both the Tennessee Constitution and the uh, and the state Constitution. Um, so there, well, there, been, there been plenty of times when we've we've taken positions that aren't aren't necessarily um, you know with the um, uh, the far right or anything like that. For instance, we in our office we. We issued an opinion. This is probably one of the more controversial things we did. We issued an opinion that said the the Bible could not be the uh, the state uh, the official state book uh, because it violated the establishment clause under the Tennessee Constitution and the federal Constitution. And uh, it was it was because the, the establishment clause in uh, in Tennessee is broader than the federal clause, and so that, that's how it had been interpreted. But that's not well, something uh, that. Let's, and Herb, I'd like to pick up. Let's do this, uh, you know? Don. Um, let's. We've only got a couple minutes left. Uh, Eddie, jump in. You get the last question. Well, I was going to say, you know, you brought up a good point on the on the Bible bill because I was in the legislature, and what I w would like people to know is that there's only a couple of ways that the AG issues an opinion, and one is if the legislature asks for one, and that's what happened in that case. That's why you opined in that, correct? Yes, we didn't volunteer to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, uh, just thinking, uh, you know, the last eight years, what's the best advice you would give to, uh, you know, your predecessor or anyone who would follow you in the AG's office uh, even long after you're gone? Well, I think the most important thing is, is to try to preserve uh, the role of the AG and the appointment uh, process by the Supreme Court. I just think it's worked well for over 150 years. Um, and we, we've had really fine lawyers. And I, I think, honestly, that we're probably the envy, the envy of the country because in Tennessee, the AG shows up and just goes to work. It's not about their raising money, not trying to figure out what the media presence is, not figuring out how to get reelected every four years. So I, I just think it's a great system. So that would be one thing. And then, um, and then the only other advice would be, you know, act out of principle and your understanding of the Tennessee Constitution and the federal Constitution. 
General, just r in terms of the context of your time as the AG, what, uh, how would you like to be remembered? How would you like people to, to think about your career while you were representing the state as the top lawyer? You know, I, that's probably a, a, a question that somebody else ought to answer. I, I never even thought about legacies or how I've been viewed. I just, you know, just tried to do the best I could and, and work hard. So, um, but I, I hope they'll remember that our office was a was an excellent office with really fine lawyers who uh, who acted, you know, ethically and represented the state well. Because Tennessee, and I say this often, Tennessee's not a great state. That's one thing I learned in almost 12 years of public service. Uh, it, it's not a good state, it's a great state. It is a really, really great state. And it's amazing to me, I see it across the country, uh, how people turn and say, well, what's Tennessee doing? Uh, because we've been such a well-managed state for so many years. Well, General, we appreciate your time and your service, and we wish you the best of luck. And the best thing we can say is welcome back to Knoxville. We've got to take another break, and then we will be back. Don and Eddie and I will be chatting. Thank you.